What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and for this Halloween-themed video, I figure, you know, we're on the weekend of it. It's uh, Halloween's just in a few days, or maybe tomorrow, depending on what day this video goes up. I wanted to do some sort of video, and, and originally I thought, well, I want to talk about a bunch of my favorite horror games. And I thought, you know what? No. I really want to just go with my gut here. And this is going to be, I feel like, controversial, where I want to talk about my favorite horror game. And this is nuts that I'm actually, uh, it's Until Dawn. Until Dawn, you know, I really, I always come back to this game. And to be flat out honest with you, that's why it's my favorite horror game. Uh, because it is an incredible game. But more than anything, you know, I think of what are my favorite horror games of all time. And the first one I always think of, or when I see a discussion on Twitter or on YouTube about anything horror game related, the first horror game I think of is Until Dawn. I love Dead Space. I love even Evil Within. I'd say Dead Space is probably my second favorite. Some of the Resident Evil games. Uh, Outlast. Outlast is terrifying. I mean, there's there are plenty of horror games, and I do like, I like horror games way more than I like horror movies. Horror movies, I'm way more closed off. I actually really only like Scream as like the main one, and maybe that's part of the reason why I like Until Dawn, because, you know, Until Dawn is not like a Scream game or anything like that, but there are some elements, I'd say, that that make Scream that's also kind of injected in Until Dawn, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at, so I want to talk about Until Dawn, because instead of talking about, you know, a bunch of my uh, other favorites, and again, Alan Wake, uh, Dead Space would probably be my number two, I want to just let's just focus on the main one so until dawn i remember when it came out very vividly i actually was in disney world i actually was uh vacationing with my family in disney world i knew the game was coming out and i do believe i had a youtube channel at the time but it was super like insanely under 300 subscribers small all that stuff and, and i'm talking about the main channel podcast now this channel didn't exist and i when i got home from the vacation I had planned to play this game, and I did, with my two best friends. And we, we went into our basement, or my basement of my house, and we played through the game. And we really did kind of like a vote-by-committee thing where we played. And actually, my sister joined for about the second half to make it four people. Because, you know, when you think about it, when you're playing it with three and you're doing kind of like a, a, a vote by committee, you only need two people, and then the one obviously would get kind of screwed out of it. So you needed well, maybe another person to kind of make it interesting, and that's what we did. And that's, I mean, those are some of my greatest memories. Now, maybe it gets enhanced because I played it with my closest friends and then my sister, and we were all kind of participating together. But I do think also that's kind of the point of this game. And what the Dark Pictures anthology became from Supermassive Games, right? It literally embraced that idea. I assume they were told that people did that stuff for Until Dawn, and they said, well, why can't we do that for future things? Because you could see it all throughout the Dark Pictures anthology of playing it online and, and, and online choices and all that stuff. So I really think they kind of embraced it right after Until Dawn. But even as, the, I mean, without that, without the social element, without the, the family kind of element, the game itself, I do think, is just so amazing. I don't beat games, most games, more than once. Uh, I actually have a hard time beating games one time in general. So going back tends to mean that I really care. Although it doesn't have to. Some games I've only beaten once, and I purposely did it that way. But Until Dawn, I think I've played it four times, maybe five, and I've beaten it. I mean, I played through all the way. Um, I remember at the time after we beat it, and I didn't do this when we were playing it because this took several weeks to play the game. And But when the game was done, I remember just sitting on YouTube for hours and I would watch every single variation. Now, obviously, again, as Supermassive has grown and, and the games have continued to come out, uh, there's more variation now than there was in Until Dawn. The choices in Until Dawn are actually not smaller in consequence, but there's less choices than probably you remember them you know, being at the time. Um, but that's okay. That's okay, because I do think Until Dawn falls in a very nice window where it had choices. It didn't have too many. It didn't feel that big. But it felt like everything you did, at least in the moment, playing it when it first released, it felt like what you were doing was going to have consequences. And they really, you know, at the time, it was like they kind of out Quantic Dream. And it's a horror game, but they kind of like out Quantic Dream, Quantic Dream, where it's like, let's make everything matter. Choices, small things, small things that you don't think really, you know, you don't really care about, they could come in. They could actually be the definitive thing that kills a character down the line. And speaking of characters, I mean, an incredible 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 cast and this is kind of rare because as supermassive has also kind of proven they're not slam dunks when you get hollywood actors they really are i mean hollywood actors 
do Hollywood stuff, they don't always translate well into games. That's been proven by them. That's been proven by other teams. But, you know, like a Hayden Panettiere was so, so good in that game. All the characters, even when they're the characters you don't necessarily like, they're stereotypes. They're supposed to be over-the-top stereotypes. That's the whole point of the game. Wendigo's an actual physical, like, slasher character, right, or villain, um, you know, kind of having those two tails. Now, that is, I think, where some people would drop the game a little bit in terms of score and feel once you kind of, I guess, pass the page or, or flip the page from it being a more slasher thing, maybe more scream-oriented, but the more slasher thing, and then you get into the supernatural elements. I personally think it works really, really well. And if you think about it, they've, or at least how, how I think about it, they've never done it like that and as well ever again. I don't really think I've seen any game that's able to have both and really kind of like a first half, second half where it is more like it's real, it's that you can actually see it, it's a human being, and then you switch and it's more supernatural, even though those supernatural elements are th uh, kind of, you know, hinted at and sprinkled throughout the entire game, you kind of can assume uh, that there's something more happening, and then when it finally happens, you're like, oh, that's neat, but... I just love it. I think the visuals still hold up. Like, weirdly enough, this game, I believe, was, what, 2015. So we are now seven full years since this game came out, and it still looks pretty darn good, especially the the, the faces and of, of the actors and all that. So, you know, like, the quarry was obviously, the quarry was made from the same general, like, higher-ups as Until Dawn. I don't, I mean, I, I like the quarry somewhat. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, it, it does not recapture, I mean, it recaptures some elements, but Until Dawn really is untouched in that way. And I don't know, I mean, like, you know, I bring up Dead Space. Dead Space, I mean, Dead Space is quite a different game, right, <laughs> than Until Dawn, but maybe that's kind of the reason. I like the more storytelling, even though Dead Space does have a story, obviously, but the more, I don't know, a horror film. It's a, and remember when the game first was announced, I guess that's another part of it as well. I can remember all the way back to when that game was announced as a PS Move game. I remember the first trailer for that game. I remember that it went away for a long time and the rumors of it being canceled and then the basic idea that, no, it's not canceled. It was completely reworked. Like they restarted it from scratch and here's what it looks like now because I can kind of remember from, from its conception all the way to when the game actually came out and then wanting there to be more and uh, you know the Dark Pictures Anthology kind of scratches a different kind of itch the quarry was close like that's obviously the best attempt or the biggest attempt they've made for Until Dawn but this game will always be very very special uh, to me it, it's it's not the pure horror like Outlast is probably or Outlast 2 one of those two those are some of the most terrifying games. PT, right? PT is one of the most terrifying games I've ever played. I, uh, you know, Silent Hill, you think of like Silent Hill 2. Now, I haven't played Silent Hill 2 all the way through, so I don't really include that because I don't really have the greatest hands on experience with it. Maybe once the remake comes out, that would be, uh, because, you know, that's oftentimes looked at as the best horror game ever made. There are plenty. There's plenty of really, really good horror games, but. The, the reason, again, I bring up Until Dawn is whenever I think of horror games, uh, it's the first one that comes to mind. And I really do think if I, you know, not to be cool, not to like, you know, uh, agree with the crowd, really, right, on YouTube or on Twitter, if I really go with my gut and am honest with myself and say, what's the game I've just enjoyed the most, I've played the most times, I've seen every variation of every cutscene in, in this game, like, what's my favorite horror game? It It is. It's Until Dawn. It was probably from the time I first played it. I loved it so much at the time, and it never really went away, um, and I still feel that way right now. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. What's your favorite horror game? Let me know uh, down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I'll see you all on tomorrow's video.